Tides are one of the many issues our rock pool organisms have to face and is arguably the most dangerous. Tides are controlled by the moon's gravitational pull, pulling water towards it during a high tide and pushing it away as the earth spins on its axis, creating a low tide. In the UK, we usually have two sets of tides a day. This means two low tides and two high tides. We're going to take a look at what challenges our native organisms face, how they overcome them, and what happens if it all goes wrong. This is life in the rock pool, surviving the tides. During a high tide, water covers the rocks, giving valuable protection from the elements like the sun and the rain. However, higher levels of water mean easier access for predators, and they begin to move in. Cephalopods like this octopus will utilise the high tides, searching over the rocks looking for an easy meal like a crab or a starfish. Fish also use the high tide, coming closer to shore looking for something to eat. In reality, nothing we consider a rock pool organism is safe, as something out there will eat it. Fortunately, there's plenty of places to hide, with seaweed and rock crevices providing perfect protection and a little hiding spot. Unfortunately though, it's just not that simple. It's not as easy as waiting for the storm to blow over. Decisions have to be made. For this crab, a dead jellyfish landed right in front of it and it decided to move out of its hiding spot and begin to feast. There may be many other reasons why an animal might move out of its hiding spot. Food is the main reason, but it could be breeding season and they may need to search for a mate or they could be in danger. Every decision each animal makes has to be taken carefully, as there could be a predator lurking around the corner, ready to snap them up. Hiding isn't the only way an animal can protect themselves in high tides. Things like limpets and anemones can stick themselves to rocks. This does mean that things like tides and currents won't move them, however, they are stationary, easy targets for predators. Jellyfish are one of the animals that perhaps feel the effects of the tides more than any other organism. Jellyfish that do have control of their movement do so by using the ring at the bottom of their head and contracting and relaxing the muscles up and down. This movement is perfectly fine in open water, where there's not much current and the tides don't really affect the jellyfish. However, in the rock pool, it can get it caught out. They're simply just not strong enough to fight against the tides and the current, and therefore get washed up when the tide goes out. Getting stuck too close to shore as the tide goes out is one of the main reasons why it's not uncommon to find jellyfish in rock pools, and usually this results in death. Assuming animals survive the high tide, it's not long before all that water disappears and we get to the low tide and a whole new set of challenges appear. Once all that water retreats, it's essential for any organism to make its way into one of the small rock pools that you frequently see. The habitat is now exposed to the elements. The sun could be beating down on the rocks, slowly cooking anything that finds itself out of water. If it's raining, it means that the salinity in the rock pools will slowly decrease and animals will have to adjust to that chemical difference. Birds like seagulls take flight to patrol the rocks, looking for any signs of movement to get a quick, easy meal. Same as during the high tide, the seaweed and the rock crevices still exist within the rock pools, so this gives animals a place to hide. Again though, like before, it's just not that simple. An animal could need to move if they're too big for the rock pool, or perhaps again feel threatened. Animals like the crab have the ability to walk on land and breathe out of water making movement between rock pools really easy. They also have that tough shell, giving them a little bit of protection from predators. Crabs and some fish can also bury themselves into sand to protect themselves. Soft-bodied animals like the starfish have the ability to tuck themselves away in really tight corners, probably not even being seen. Small rock pool fish like the shanny have evolved large pectoral fins. They can use these to drag themselves from one rock pool to another. They can also take large gulps of air, meaning that they can survive out of water for quite a while. After the challenges that the low tide brings are faced, the high tide returns and the cycle begins all over again. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different and slightly longer episode of Life in the Rock Pool. Usually you can catch me every second Wednesday at 6pm where I'll do a deep dive into a plant or animal that lives in UK rock pools. If you did enjoy, please like the video, it helps us out a lot, and subscribe to Naturescope to not miss any more future uploads. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you all next time.